Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Kingdom Advancement. I am Apostle Sonia Chambers, and I just welcome you. Just come on in worshiping. Come on in praising the Lord, giving him honor, giving him glory, giving him praise. This is his day that he has made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, tonight's Kingdom Advancement is live from Richmond, Virginia, where we just finished doing a walking in feminine excellence uh, wife rounds with some college um, young ladies who just left the building. <laughs> so we thank the Lord uh, that the next generation is hungry for God. They're looking for God, they're seeking after him and we just have to meet them in tangible ways so that we can pour into them and um, for them to advance the kingdom as we continue to grow. Amen. So tonight the word is if. I F. Tonight's word is if. And there's a lot of ifs in our lives. There's a lot of ifs that we think about. There's just two letters. I F. And the word if is a conjunction. And synonyms of if is in the event that. It also means allowing that. It says on assumption that. It says on condition that. Another meaning is weather. So if, if can mean weather. It can also mean it's used as a function word to introduce an exclamation expressing a wish. We're talking about if tonight. I F. But what about if I F for us? means I feel. So let's go to the scripture. Because we're talking about if tonight, but what about if I feel? Matthew 15, 32 says, then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing left to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry because they might faint from exhaustion on the way home. And even Jesus felt. So how do we feel? What, do, what is our thoughts? What are our actions? It says he feels compassion. And one of the things we have to come to that place in life when we realize that our feelings is not our, cannot be emotional. Because after spending, what is it, uh, almost six hours with young adult women, you know, teaching and encouraging and watching our minister Monet teach them and run a lesson and run a group and all of these things, I can feel tired. But the work that we're doing with Christ to advance the kingdom, we have to have compassion for others. And we can't decide that every feeling that we have our every emotion that we have is valid. What do you feel tonight? Do you feel tired? Because I can say I feel tired. You know, I feel fed up. I feel like not doing this. I feel like not doing that. But Jesus looked at a crowd and I know he was tired because guess what? The crowd was with him for three days. But he didn't say, I feel tired. He said, I feel compassion for the crowd. They've been with me now for three days. And have nothing, do we have anything for them to eat? He said, I don't want to send people away hungry. And one of the things we have to realize in the body of Christ, just like today, it was just such a prime example as the young women came here for fellowship with us. They came uh, to the space that we rented. Uh, we fed them first. Uh, we gave them the word. We encouraged them. They, they, they shared their heart, they shared their emotions. But the goal is for the next, for us to advance the kingdom and build out the next generation, we have to have compassion. We can't just uh, be judgmental. We just cannot be condemning. We just can't feel to say whatever we want to say to them. We got to ask the Holy Spirit because if we do not, we will lose a generation. If we continue to just do things the way that we used to do in the past, we will not advance the kingdom in that way. So I want, I'm encouraging myself because I learned a lot from sitting with these young ladies for six hours to, to hear their heart and who they are on college campuses. And all I could feel, just like Jesus, I felt compassion for the crowd. I felt compassion 
for a young woman. I feel compassion for the homeless man on the street. Do we feel compassion for the single mother? Do we feel compassion for the elderly? Because this if is mean I feel. Do, what do we feel? Because whatever we feel is going to be our ministry. Whatever we feel is going to be our passion. That thing that, that shakes you and moves you and, and, and makes you want to give and makes you want to sow and wants you, makes you want to grow and makes you want to serve. But if we don't pay attention to those unctions, those things that God is pulling at us, the Holy Spirit is wooing us, it's just another if. I, if I, if I should have, could have, would have. And I'm saying tonight, we have to get feelings for others. We got to get feelings for the lost. We got to get feeling for those who don't know him. We got to get feelings for the drag, drug addict. We got to get feelings for the alcoholic. We got to get feelings for the gambler. We got to get feelings and have compassion. If. Tonight, it's a conjunction. I feel. Let's keep going. If I forgive. Colossians 3, verses 13 and NLT says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So even tonight in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every one of us that's holding for unforgiveness in our heart even now. We have to have hearts of compassion in Jesus' name. It says we must make allowances for each other's faults. Not that every fault that someone um, that you see that you, you agree with or that you're happy about, but we have to learn to forgive. So that if means I forgive because it says, Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. And sometimes we forget that. We forget that we were young like others. We forget that we, we just weren't born saved. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we have to learn to forgive. But first we got to feel. So that if we got to say, I feel. And if I feel and that emotion is painful or, or stressful or brings back bad emotions, then you say, Lord, help me to forgive. Show me how to forgive. Because if we do not, it's going to be short-lived. And we're saying we want a long life. And, and unforgiveness in us creates sickness. It creates stress. Um, depresses us. Gives you ulcers. Gives you hernias. Gives you all these things. So we're talking about if tonight. It's a conjunction. It's just two letters. I F. So tonight, we want to feel. So I feel. And that feeling has to be compassion for those who we care about, those who don't care about us, those who are lost, those who are backslidden. We have to feel compassion for those and reach them by showing them the love of Christ in Jesus' name. And if we have ought with someone else, then we need to forgive. How can your father forgive you if you're not forgiving others? I want to say uh, Colossians 3, 13, NLT, one more time. Make allowance for each other's faults. Even right now, I'm thinking about husbands and wives. We're going to have to make allowances for each other's faults. We don't always have to agree. But I'm saying to you, it says, and forgive anyone who offends you. And yes, sometimes we are offended and we don't want to reconnect with others. And it doesn't, just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that you have to be around them all the time. But this if means I forgive. Even if they don't forgive you, you forgive. Let us clean our slate in Jesus' name. Because the Lord forgave us. He, Jesus went up on the cross and he, even those who were killing him, he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. And sometimes the people who offend us, they know what they're doing. But we sometimes we're going to have to turn the other cheek and trust the Lord and forgive others. We have one more if. Because first, that first if is I feel. That second if is I forgive. But guess what? The third if is I focus. We have to stay focused on the prize of the higher calling that's in Christ Jesus. We can't just sit back and, and be, I feel in our emotions or I, for, I, I forgive, but I still hold unforgiveness. We got to focus on the prize. It's time to advance the kingdom of God. And we got to do that in every facet. We have to do it 
in the young. We have to do it in the middle age. We have to do it in the old. We have to do it in the seniors. We have to figure out ways to, to, to be more creative for the children who, you know, not able to focus. But we have to focus. We have to tap into the Holy Spirit and figure out creative ways to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to read the scripture. It's Philippians 3, 12 to 20 in NLT. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. And tonight God is calling you. He's calling you out of your feelings. He's calling us out of our unforgiveness. He's calling out us out of our emotions. And he's saying, focus, press toward the prize, press towards your business, press towards your ministry, press towards your degree, press towards caring for your family members, press towards caring for others, press, 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 press towards that prize. Because Jesus is the one who's calling you. It said, let, a, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. And we have to agree. If we've been uh, reaching out and been reading the word and been in Christendom for, for extensive amount of time, it's time to know that we must spiritually mature. And we must agree that we have to focus. We have one enemy. There's one kingdom to build. And we have to advance it in Jesus' name. The scripture goes on to say, if you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. We have no time to lose any laborers. We need each and every person in the advancing the kingdom. There's ministry in everyone. There's a ministry for every person to do, if, be it on your job, uh, be it on the subway, be it uh, in the church, be it on the street. There's always someone that we can minister to. Uh, you know, myself and Minister Monet are down here in Richmond, Virginia, and um, she had to run out this morning on an errand, and she took an Uber. And when she went to the store to take to take this Uber, I, I, you know, I was thinking she was going quite long because we were preparing for the event today. And uh, she came back in and she says, oh my gosh, I did ministry. She got so excited. She was able, the Uber driver started talking to her, brought her to the place where we're staying, uh, kept her in the car for 10 minutes. And she was able to minister to her, pray for her children, the the, she was having, she was having, uh, she was pregnant and she had a young child and she get told her every single thing about herself. Can you imagine if you're just taking an Uber, you just get in there, you sit down and those who are wearing masks, you put your mask on and you just sit there and you just, you know, you just go and you're not realizing that there's a person that's in the front that could be hurting and need healing. If we would reach out to others, if we would talk to others, if we would show compassion to others, if we would come out of our comfort zone, if, if, if we got to focus mm, to advance the kingdom of God. Let me go on with this scripture and finish this up. It says, dear brothers and sisters, sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are, listen, we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly, hallelujah, we are eagerly, Hallelujah. We are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Now that's Philippians 12 to 20. 
But we got to stay focused because this, we, you know, we're heavenly citizens. This place is not our home. We're bought with a price, but we're going to have to feel. Do you feel? We're going to have to forgive because he forgave us. And we're going to have to focus. And the focus is to advance the kingdom of God in your sphere of influence. If we would do that, if we would just trust the Lord, if we would step out of our comfort zone, if we would share the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we could encourage those who are disenfranchised, if we could pray for someone else, if we could share with someone else, if, if, if. Mm. What a day of rejoicing it would be if we would just step out of being, you know, self-centered and be Christ-centered, knowing that we have to focus. Yeah, we have feelings, but we got to focus. We have to focus on advancing the kingdom of God. Time is winding up. You know, we're down here and uh, I was not aware that the wife rounds uh, college life, college wife, college life was going to be so, um, it was just so impactful for me. I just, I was like a fly on the wall. I spoke every now and then because we were listening to young women hungry for the Lord, wanting to do better wanting to have a better relationship, wanting to know their purpose. And there are many of us that we've been, you know, been Christians for such a long time. We don't even want to know our purpose. And I'm sitting there with 20, 21, 22 year old young women talking about, we want to know our purpose in Christ. You know, uh, we want to pattern our life. We want to line up in righteousness. We want to know how to navigate it. And they were just so thankful that there were women that were willing to pour into them and mentor. And this, we have to now look around because if you look around, if you try and see, you'll see that there's someone that's looking for the Christ in you for you to share. So I just wanted to encourage you tonight because I feel like we need to do better. I had to forgive myself because sometimes I miss the mark. But I just realigned myself like this scripture. And I said, I focus, Lord. I'm going to refocus. And tonight I'm praying a prayer of refocus that we're going to re, we're going to stop using the words if I should have or if I could have. But we're going to move forward knowing that we're focused on the prize and the higher calling is in Christ Jesus. So I pray tonight this word encourage you because I spent six hours with some young women who encouraged me. So when all those are saying, talking about our young people, there is a, there is a group of young people that they don't do church like we do church where we have to be in there. They, they, they have identified they are the church and they just want to grow in Christ in relationship and do the work of the Lord. So there's lots of work for us to do in the kingdom. So I pray that you focus that you start to feel, that you forgive yourself for not doing what you're supposed to do and then just dust yourself off and just move forward in Jesus' name. So God bless you all. I'm not long tonight because those girls, they they worked us today. And, um, but I know that if we can get Christ into the next generation, then there's hope for the future. There's hope for our grandchildren. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. I mean, they almost didn't want to leave. And to see, you know, we we talk about our young people, you know, we see things and and I'm saying, I beg to differ. There are they they're looking for Christ. They're just looking for us to to help them find the way. So this is Kingdom Advancement. I'm Apostle Sonia Chambers. I feel I forgive but I focus. And I pray that this word encourages you to focus on whatever the goal and the dream that the Lord has for you. I pray even now in the name of Jesus that each and every person under the sound of this teaching and under my voice, 
that they start to feel the compassion of Christ and reach out to others, that they can forgive their brothers and sisters in Jesus' name, and that they can focus on the prize, which is the higher calling in you. And Father, everything that we do, we're going to give you honor and we're going to give you glory and we're going to give you praise. There is none like our God in the holy earth. We worship you, O oh God, if, mm, if, if it's time for us to focus. So God bless you all. I love you all. This is Kingdom Advancement. We are live from Richmond and truly... There's a blessing in Virginia. It's it not only is Virginia for lovers, Virginia is to show love. So God bless you all. I love you all. And if you would like to donate, because now with the King K Kingdom Advancement, now that we're doing these wife rounds, we are investing. Um, and the pictures aren't out yet because there was too many things going on here yet. So, but we are investing in the next generation, KA Global. And the wife rounds, uh, you know, we'll be doing fellowships as and um, Bible studies. And now we'll be doing Zoom. And, the, you know, we want to encourage the young women to just move forward with Christ and to invest in them. So I encourage you to give to kaglobal.org because not only are we dealing with things on a global scale, but wife is now, you know, we're trying to hit the local front and reach out to uh, the young women as they walk in feminine excellence, which is part of the kingdom advancement team of ministries. So God bless you all. I love you all. If it's, you know, it's time to feel, it's time to forgive. Remember it's time to focus. So God bless you. I love you. And I will see you next week. Good night. <laughs>